the true definition of John 3.36. This is one that the pastors don't like because this doesn't fit into their grace gospel, you know, which says all you must do is believe, which is a lie. If you truly believe, Yashur, Yashur said, it's, it's better for you to cut off one of your limbs than to keep on sinning and go to hell. So do you really believe his word? You can't just pick and choose which ones you want to believe. You must believe them all. So anyone, this, this is John 3.36. The believing in the Son has life eternal. So believing in, that's strong. That doesn't just mean you, you just believe. You believe in. You're willing to die for this. Believing in something is is way deeper. Uh, I don't know why, but it is. Even the devils believe. That's what the Bible says. So the believing in the Son has life eternal. The however not obeying the Son not will will son not will see life but the wrath of god abides on him so the believing in the son has life eternal the however not obeying the son not will see life but the wrath of god abides on him so this grace doc uh, doctrine of lies and falsehood it's lies. That don't even that don't even account for what Yasher said. Yasher said it's better you cut off one of your limbs if it's causing you to sin. Only the holy are getting in. When you really believe and love God, love his definition of love is to obey the commandments. And that's the law. People need to go and look and read the law. It's not hard. People say Oh, you mean 613? Yeah, 613, that ain't nothing. Man, a lot of those are, don't sleep with the animal. Don't sleep with your sister. Don't sleep with your brother. Don't sleep with your brother's wife. Man, these are some very simple commandments that anyone can do. No one is good, which that definition is naturally good. That doesn't mean we can't keep the commandments. Be angry and sin not. Like, this is easy, y'all. What's hard is not keeping them. That's what's hard. Okay, here's John 3.36. I want to just show you why it's so important that we seek. We are supposed to seek the Lord with all our heart and then we'll find him. Those that aren't digging deep, they're not going to find him. Okay, John 3, 36. Whoever believes the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects? No, that's a mistranslation. It's whoever does not obey. NIV is trash in this one. How about the New Living Tr Translation? Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. Anyone who does not obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but um Remains under God's angry judgment. Okay, that's a little better, even though, you know, I just prefer it being as close to the truth as possible. What about this one? Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. ES, ESV got it, got it right this time. I like that. Let's, let's scroll down to King James. Okay, what does it say? This is the most trash. This is the most trash translation there is. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Hmm. No, actually, that says obey. You know, your parents can tell you something, and you believe them and choose not to obey them. So, no, you must obey. You must keep the commandments. 
You will not enter into the kingdom of heaven unless you keep God's commandments. Do not be deceived. There is no grace. Gospel. That is lie. The favor of God comes from keeping his commandments. God reigns on the just and the unjust here on earth. But the unjust, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Do not be deceived. Only the holy are getting in. Point blank, period. Now let's go to another translation that proves the Bible has been corrupted. Jeremiah 8.8. 8. Hmm. Let's see what it says. How can you say we are wise? For we have the law of the Lord when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely. That's a good translation. But let's see what King James says. The trash translation. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it, the pen of the scribes in vain. You know, this is just on purposely confusing. So people will just read right over and say, hmm, what does that mean? Yeah. So let's see what the real translation is. And Jeremiah, just so we know, this is talking about the end days. I've argued this. With this one man continuously but you know what this is why we do not put our trust in men men are not all knowing we we have to lean not on our own understanding there's a reason yasha said no one is good but the father that means naturally good our hearts are deceitful and wicked we do not rely on our own mind and understanding there's a way that seemeth right to a man but the end thereof is hell so we rely on Yahshua. We take every, and Yahweh, the Father, we take everything and, and seek Him. Literally, Yahweh's word is the Father's word. That's why if uh, Yahshua's word, I mean, Jesus' word is literally the testimony of the Father. So if you reject His word, you're literally rejecting the Father. So we're going to go to the inner linear. And you can never trust their definitions, but at least you can get their text. That's one thing I like. And I, I even like to verify that. In the codex, you can't verify everything there, but you can verify some. So here is, here's Jeremiah. Okay, Jeremiah 8.8, 8, Hebrews. So we got to read this way. How can you say wise we and the law Yava with us? Truly look, falsehood works. The pen, false. And look, it says the scribe. But I double checked this and this is actually books. And I'm pretty sure I know what books that's talking about. But let me show you. I already looked earlier, but I'll do it again so you can see. Books. I just erase that so I want y'all to see. Okay, here we go. Books. That should be books. So let's go back to Jeremiah. How can you say wise we? So in other words, how can you say you're wise? That's how I take it. Take it how you want. The law of Yava with us truly look. Yasha's telling us, look, falsehood works. The pen, false books in the Bible. What do you think Yash's talking about? Who wrote lies about his law in the Bible? Uh, Paul and whoever wrote Hebrews prove that to you some more let's go here let's go to Matthew 13 why isn't this working come on Matthews 
I think it's Matthew 13, 24. Okay, this is, this is Yasher speaking. This is the parable. Jesus told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. This is the Bible. This is God's word. The good seed is God's word. And it produces wheat. While everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, which are the tares. There's the wheat and the tares, the weeds. No good. Remember, the weeds are going to be pulled up. How do you think he sowed this? How did, Yasha, how did Jesus sow? With his word. That's the same way Paul and whoever wrote Hebrews uh, sowed with their word. Which um, in Isaiah it talks about um, their word was falsehood and lies about God's covenant. It was a, a covenant built on falsehood and lies. So while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And that's exactly where it is in his field, among his word. It's um, like the true gospels. And then all of a sudden, it's Paul and Hebrews, um, the enemy's seed. And then, um, then we're reminded in like Jude 1-4, we're, we're reminded and we're even told that the enemy, these wicked people slipped in unaware and perverted the grace of God into a license to commit lawlessness and denied the father and the son. How do you think they denied the father and the son? It's not because they didn't use his name. It's because they brought a false Messiah. The one Jesus said was coming behind him that would deceive many, even the elect if possible. <clears throat> yeah. So we need to return to the words Jesus taught. We need to make sure everything aligns with his word. We don't base everything on Paul's words. No, we know Paul is trash. We know he, he was the enemy. Actually, the enemy was the angel he belonged to and served. But yeah, return to the true word. All right, let's go to how they covered up in Acts, how Paul worshiped and his God was an angel. They covered that up pretty good. So this is their translations. Acts 27:23. Uh, NIV, last night an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong and I serve, stood beside me. So that's literally worded where you could believe that it was an angel of God, the God in whom he belonged and served, stood beside him. Or you could take it as the angel of God, meaning uh, in whom I belong and I serve, stood beside me. I see it as you could take it either way. It's not the true translation anyway. And NIV or NLT for last night, an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. See what King James put for there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I belong and whom I serve. You see, all these are putting of, 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 but of is not in the original translation. This is the original translation. And they put of here too. See this, of God? This right here, this means only God. This doesn't mean of God. And this word means the. So I would read, stood by me, stood for me, this Something night, not sure what that is. It could be several things. Something night, the God whom I am, whom and I serve, a angel. Okay, 
So he, he's making this angel his God. Stood by me this the night, the, the God, not the of God, they added that. This is the, it's not of. Um, and this is actually before almost every place it says God, it's the. So they added of, let's take of out completely. Stood for me this night, the God whom I am, which also means belong to, whom and I serve the angel. Okay, so let's take it out of these now. The of out and see how these sound. Last night, an angel, the God to whom I belong and I serve, stood beside me. Let's do this one. For last night, an angel, the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me. For this very night, there stood before me an angel, the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. Okay, so you're not supposed to belong to an angel, you're not supposed to serve an angel, and you're not supposed to worship an angel. Point blank, period. Let's go here. Luke 4, 8. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now what about the angel in Revelations, the, the good angel that that came and talked to to John what did he do I John am the one who heard and saw these things and when I had heard and seen them I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me check out what the angel tells him but he said to me, don't do that, for I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. You get it? No good angel will allow you to worship them. That's, that's the Luciferian doctrine. All right.